was there was there was empires in Africa called Kush, Timbuktu, where every race came to get books. My success to you, even if you wish me the opposite. Sooner or later, we'll all see who the prophet is. TV live in the centre of London. We are about to enter the University of Westminster and you are with the Vibe Master Dormuta Venant, that's me and the GKTV crew. We are here to find out all about the uh, great female black resistance warriors, soldiers of our time who stood up for their race, for their people, put their lives on the line. This event is hosted by Black History Walks and uh, takes place from about ooh, 6.30 right through to uh, 9 o'clock. So we're here a little bit early and uh, seeing exactly who's going to be entering the uh, building and uh, what we can look forward to. What are you uh, hoping to uh, pick up today or what are you hoping to see? Um, I just want to learn. I just want to learn, really. Like, uh, it's called yeah, 400 Years of uh, Black Women uh, and Black Resistance. Like, and I just kind of want to see more of what's going on. Like, I, I want to learn stuff I didn't learn at school or I haven't learned up to this age now. Um, um, so yeah, I'm just quite interested. Finally, how do you think it will tie in today? Because it's funny how we watch things from historical past and how they repeat themselves and have a, a bearing and meaning on things that are happening in the world, even though, yeah, we've changed in modern times. What do you, what do you, what do you reckon? Um, yeah, I think it would be good, actually. I think it would be enlightening because I think it would be... It's interesting, yeah, how history repeats itself. And so I think, hopefully, I'm hoping that today might just let some things click and just be like, oh, so there's stuff that's going on today and there are people for the last 400 years, 400 years that have been resisting this type of stuff. I'm hoping that I'll get I'll get some insights like that. To be fair, I don't have any expectations. I'm just really looking forward to just educating myself a bit more about black women and what we've been through. And uh, black women are true survivors and hopefully this will show you that. Definitely, we've both been through a lot throughout the years, friends of 20 odd years, so yet we know. Um, I actually studied cultural studies at uni, so for me it's a, like a little bit of a sort of long-term interest really in terms of identity and sort of politics and how people interplay over time and what changes and obviously we're all a product of the history that brought us here today so yeah really looking forward to it. Now Queen Zinga actually leads armies into battle and fights personally against the Portuguese for something like 30 odd years. She doesn't stop fighting until she's about 75 years old. So imagine your granny, one of us, you know, fighting people because that was she was doing back in the 1600s. So this is an incredible story, and she's a real person. She's not like she's made up. This is one example of the black people system in the government. The Amazon warriors of the woman. Now, the woman is an area you now call the in West Africa. And these women were the personal bodyguard to the king. And they were something like 6,000 strong. And they fought in battle against the French foreign legion. And all must be them. The French foreign legion itself says that basically, if these women had the same weapons as we did, we would have lost the battles. So Nani of the Moors is one of the most famous African women resistance leaders in the world. As you can see, she actually had a own town up in the mountains. So she's a big woman and she actually had a own town up in the mountains. And what she would do is she would come down at night and burn down plantations and rescue and slave Africans and bring them back to her place. So she was hardcore. She was like red, white, gold, and that's what she did. I mean, she had a own town of 800 people for over 50 years. So this is something again, you know, it's weird that in our schools here we are taught about slavery, but they don't teach you about Nanny and what she was doing. So you hear about all the other stuff, you hear about local first club, you don't hear about this is just one example. You're at GKTV, we are here at the uh, University of Westminster making some of uh, our females who have come to see about 400 years of resistance and uh, female struggles uh, feel a little bit comfortable. Some of them are a bit camera shy and we're getting them to give you a few sound bites. Keep it where you got it, GKTV, your number one conscious platform. I'm Dua Mutev and, uh, and we're here with the team having a wonderful Friday evening. So what do you think of it so far, Salah? I'm really impressed. Um, he's covering a lot of content and I'm really happy that I came. Yeah, and uh, as I was explaining to somebody beforehand, as well as there being a serious side to it, there's a lot of humour injected into the um, presentation as well. Uh, yeah, I think he's got a really good style. Like, some of it is very emotional, 
but he's keeping it light-hearted and informative so which one of the uh, female uh, survivors or pioneers or warriors has caught your eye really at this present time um it's one i already knew about but sojourner truth okay yeah um i just want to read the poem again <laughs> now, <laughs> now i'm in a mood now you're in the mood again, yeah? And who have you learned about that you haven't uh, heard about? I didn't know any, anything about the warriors in Benin. Uh, okay. I think they're called Dahomey. Yeah, Dahomey. I didn't know anything about them. I'm very interested by them. So you go away and check it out? Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm writing a list. I'm writing as, as we speak, that, that, that's what it's all about. I like to hear that, my sister. How have you uh, felt about what you've seen thus far? Um, I've been very emotional really about this I, I saw the film Queen and Zynga last week and so I wanted to follow it up with this talk and, and really delve into the history of um, female resistance leaders um, and what one of the most empowering things has been finding about finding out about women I didn't know about um, ones I hadn't heard of. So I have been acquainted through uh, going to supplementary school um, and being within the Pan-African community. I've known about um, sisters like uh, Queen uh, Nzinga and uh, Nani of the Maroons, um, but I hadn't heard about some of the other uh, female warriors um, of our history and the great legacy that they um, have you know, given to us. So. I, f I find it very empowering right now to begin to scratch the surface of really how great our people have been and, is, and especially what women have contributed to our resistance as people. There's a book, this one, well there's several books actually, because when it comes to the Montgomery boy boycott in particular, what we find is that Martin Luther King gets a lot of the attention, but when it comes to the actual organizing, and prosecution, not pro that's the wrong word, the actual kind of driving force behind the Alabama Montgomery bus boycott, women were doing it. Women were doing the carpooling, the driving, the organization, taking names down, doing the telephone tree, they were doing all that kind of stuff. They just didn't get the credit for it. But here's a book which gives you a different perspective on <laughs> the Montgomery bus boycott. Because of course you know about Rosa Parks, but there was a whole network of women. And again, you find that same situation happening here when it comes to the Black British Civil Rights Movement, in that there's an organization, for example, called the Organi Organization of Women of African and Asian Descent, which I'll show to you later on. This is Doris Pilkington. She was a victim of the Australian government policy which forced to remove light-skinned Aboriginal children to work as domestic and sex slaves for white Australians. And actually, people who came from Europe, be it Germany, Spain, Holland, England, whatever, they were given these children as servants. They were put into missionary schools, beaten and raped, and taught only to cook and to wash. She grew up with, with no knowledge of her true history or culture. In 1995, she wrote the life story of her mother, Molly, who was kidnapped to a forced labor camp. Molly escaped and walked 1,000 miles home. She was recaptured and re-imprisoned. She escaped and walked 1,000 miles home again. Those kids are known as the Stolen Generation. And if you put in Stolen Generation, there's massive information, documents, or books about it. But it's a huge situation which took place up until the 1970s in Australia, whereby black mixed race children were stolen from their families and taken to these kind of camps where they were taught to hate themselves, hate their culture, but to love white people and to become their servants. That's the fact. They made a film about it. Have you heard about this film? It's very, 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 very well worth watching. So if you don't know about Aboriginal history, black history in Australia, that is the film to, to tell you about because it's based on her experience, the true life story, directed by a guy called Philip Noy, who also directed some of the Bond movies, I think it was. But yes, yeah, a major film. Who is the man this, oh, on this side? Who's the man? Well, if you, know, if you knew Huey, you, got, you should know Bobby Seale too, right? Right? This is Bobby Seale on the left hand side. So Huey Newton and Bobby Seale founded the Black Panthers together, right? They're the lead guys. The woman in the middle. Her name is Elaine Brown. Who was Elaine Brown? This is her book. A Taste of Power. You can, that book is amazing, right? You can buy it if you want. A Taste of Power. And Elaine Brown is ranked alongside, look, a Shatter Sakur, Kathleen Cleaver, and Angela Davis. She's up there with those people. But who is she? What did she do? What was the big deal with her, right? Let's find out. Elaine Brown was the chairman of the Black Panther Party between 1974 and 1977. So a woman led the Black Panthers for three years. A woman. 
in the 70s. She was like a general. She actually, and the Pampers were, were a lot of hardcore brothers from the streets, including a whole bunch of street gangs who were literally hardcore. As I said, we're coming to an end here at Black History Walks. Uh, how you doing, my good sister? Your name first? Kimberly. Kimberly. Yes. Uh, sounds like an American accent I we're hearing. It is an American accent, yes. An American in London. An American in London. And actually an American from the Deep South. So. The Deep South, yeah? Yes, I grew up in Arkansas. Okay, and you studying in London at the present time? No, um, fortunately I am working here temporarily. <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately? Unfortunately, I am working here. because I'm missing America? No, I just found that race relations here are actually worse than in the U.S. It's just the U.S., they're a lot more, I think, open about the um, conflict and the history and the racism. So, wow. it's sort of been an opening experience working here in the UK. Interesting insight. And uh, how did you find the presentation today? Oh, I truly enjoyed it. I was actually, I'm going to the um, Phoenix Cinema at the end of this month so I can see, you know, receiving more information. Okay, Kimberly. And uh, like you said, you're going to go to the next event, so you were obviously inspired. Was there anything that you heard today that you hadn't really heard before? Um, um, the Queen and Dinga, that's the one I'm going at the end of this month. I um, didn't know about that figure at all, and I was saying I was a little bit surprised because in the U.S. that I found that some of this black information that's new for a lot of people, that it's just kind of standard um, in the U.S. And not because, again, they're any more enlightened, it's just more, I think, I've known maybe more sort of conscious black people, they sort of seek out that information. So a lot of the information was just kind of reinforcement, like in, empowering, but there were some new information, new figures that were introduced that I was like, yeah, I'm really glad I came out. Yeah. That's great. Um, half my family live in America as well, New oh. York and uh, Florida okay. uh, at this present time. And the contrast between America and here, where America seems to have, uh, or the black population seems to have it together a lot more. Do you find that in your stay in the UK? Are you amazed at... When you said together, you mean more unified? Yeah. Um, or do you feel we have the same situations in America as we have here in the UK? I think at the end of the day, black people in the US have more of a claim to the country that they're you know, in, in battle with. Whereas here, um, blacks very much are like unwanted guests. Whereas in the US, you're just second class citizens. But a second class citizen is still better off than an unwanted guest. So I think they're a little bit more invested and a little bit more willing to stand up and fight and protest and you know, sort of go through that battle. Whereas here, I, I found that blacks, um, not only they're not united, but they're not as invested. And that's not to say you know, all blacks you know, of, you know, throughout the history of Britain, but just my two and a half years here in, in the UK, it's, it's been sort of shocking um, and it's been an eye opener. Welcome to GKTV. We are at the end of another excellent event put on by this uh, gentleman, Tony Warner of Black History Walks. Uh, we were looking at the uh, 400 years of black women's resistance. Uh, uh, welcome to Tony. Thank you very much Thanks. for the presentation, bro. Cheers, man. Uh, excellent presentation as always. Uh, would you please with the turnout? No. I mean, on Facebook, we had like 3,000 people who had ticked they were going to come. 3,000. Mm -hmm. And then on the event, but we had like 184 people registered, so I expect at least to have 184, and we had about maybe 150 up in there. So I wasn't happy with the turnout. Uh, Friday evening in London, hot sunny day, yeah. yeah. Um, but the importance of what you uh, did today cannot be overemphasized. Uh, I love the way that you married everything up from the past to today because it's interesting how history seems to repeat itself. Absolutely, and that's why I try to kind of show the, the background and make the connection to the present so people would understand why things happen the way they do and also they can then understand you know how to kind of fight against it if it's something to be fought against that is. A lot of the uh, footage that you showed as well showed a lot of similarities that happens in the struggles in the uh, US and that happens in the UK. Yeah. Some of the times a lot of us don't see that signage they seem to think it's a totally yeah, different yeah, thing yeah. happening yeah. in the, in the uh, US that's happening in the UK but that's not really the case, is it? No, I have a lot of Americans who come on the um, Black History Watch around here, and they're always kind of surprised by how much commonality there is between the experience of black people living here with regard to like police, for example, and black people in America. And the whole Australian Aboriginal civil rights movement is, is something that freaks people out. But when you look at the, com the comparisons, they're, they're so stark and so, you know, so obvious that it links into this idea that white supremacy is a global system and it's not just happens in one part of the world, it's a, a global thing. And anyone listening, if they want to find you uh, online, where can they find you? Um, it's blackhistorywalks.co.uk and it's also facebook.com blackhistorywalks and they've got Twitter blackhistwalker. So just put blackhistorywalks in and see what comes up.
Thank you very much, sir. I can see you're a committed man. Thanks for spending the time to speak with us when everybody's gone, you know, and uh, hopefully, like I says, next time you'll be a bit more pleased with the turnout. Yeah, yeah? and uh, keeps the, we'll, we'll stay close with you here at GKTV because we love what you do. Yeah. All right, so keep doing what you're doing, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, I was enlightened today by your presentation, you know, some of the stuff that we didn't see. And I think that's what it's really all about, you know, empowering the minds, yeah? We are with Tony Warner, Black History Walks, GKTV, your number one conscious platform. You know, we try and get to the events that matter. This was an event that matter. The man who put it on wasn't necessarily happy with the turnout. They do say, if you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book we had a young lady who spoke earlier on and said there are things that are in the rules she's come from america that she's found out and that we don't enact on so we're definitely getting a vibe from this event that we need to pay attention a lot more we need to read a lot more and we definitely need to attend events like this and start to big up some of our great teachers some of our great lecturers and also as well some of our great trainers who look to empower our minds that's my thought I'm going to leave you with right here on GKTV. We'll be back with you very shortly. From Tony Warner, from Dua Mutev and Ankh, from the GKTV crew. Until the next one, take care. Namaste. Peace.